So uh, this morning, I turn on my computer and uh, log into YouTube, and I see, wow, there's something cool from the guys at Mighty Car Mods. Hey, T Nitro. Thanks, Joe. Um, yeah. So there's so there's a if you haven't seen this Mighty Car Mod video yet. You you want to go see it, and I uh, I should probably put it down in the uh, put it down in the address or in the in the description for this. I don't know how, I don't know if I can do this all quickly enough, but I'll have it done before before I'm done. I'll have it uh, I'll have it loaded into the description or after. You want to go look at look at this Mighty Car Mods video because it's pretty cool, man. I really dig what Marty and Moog do, and. Uh, you know, it it wasn't super scientific, but they put in the effort. So it's worth watching. If you've never seen your stuff before, it's it's fun. Alex just asked, are Ford Fusion 2.5s easy on gas? Um 2.5, is that the is that an older fusion? Or the newer one is a is it a 2.3? I can't remember the can't remember the displacements. Is it is it EcoBoost or naturally aspirated? Is the big question. The best Ford Fusion for fuel economy is definitely the hybrid, if you can swing that. So, um, yeah, I, I started to shoot a video this morning, a, uh, uh, a reaction to, to Marty and Moog's piece, MCM's piece, and then I, I just wasn't happy with it. I have a really tough time um, memorizing stuff. So... I don't like using a teleprompter either. I don't have a real teleprompter. I use a computer, and a lot of times with the computer, you get like glare up in the screen, and it just looks bad. Or even if I can do it without my glasses, if it's really big, it's cool. But but what happens is then you can see that you see like a white spot in your eyes, and then if you're reading, your eyes shift back and forth. So when you see stuff on TV, when they're using a teleprompter, the teleprompter is right there next to where the camera is, and it's tight. So their eyes just stay in one spot, and the the lines move upwards. Otherwise, you're like back and forth, and it just looks like, man, this guy's really shifty. So anyway, I started shooting it this morning. I tried like three or four times. It just sucked, so I, I, I tossed it out. Anyway, Alex, 2010, so that's a naturally aspirated um, Ford engine. and you know, easy on gas compared to what? It's okay. Go look at the, go look at the fueleconomy.gov for the for the numbers. I think I probably have a fusion page someplace on my website. If you go and search for it, the fusion hybrid is pretty good. And look, Joe's driving a, a C Max hybrid, getting 50 miles per gallon plus during the heat wave. Yeah, as long as you're not turning the air conditioning on, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Hey, Mr. Mayday, what's happening? You're getting the best mileage out of your charger. That's great to hear, man. I love chargers. Chargers, like, for me, charger is like the, it's like the guilty pleasure, man. I, it's one of my favorites because it's so big and it's so comfortable. And if you, you've got the RT, man, it's pretty fast. And man, that Hemi sounds great when you get on it. It's just got that whoa, V8 sound. So I love it. I love most cars. There are very few cars that I don't uh, that I don't get some enjoyment out of these days. But the Charger, man, that's a that's a fun one. So yeah, going back to the going back to the the Fusion, check out those numbers. You know, I could I could go and look. You know, here I'm gonna right here. I'm gonna go to fueleconomy.gov and I'll look for you. See what the numbers are. I'm guessing it's not gonna be great, but by 2010, Ford was. Uh, was really starting to, to get it together. 2010. So fueleconomy.gov, I, I should do, uh, here, hold on a second. Can I do the, uh, I don't know how to, I, honestly, I would try and do the screen grab, but I can't. <laughs> it's not easy. I'll just go, and, I'll read it for you. Ford, we're going to look for market class, and that's a, uh, what would you say? It's a family sedan? Let's take a quick search here. Yeah, okay, so the Fusion Hybrid 2010 is rated at 36 high, 
36 highway, 41 city, 39 combined, which is pretty good. The 2.5 is rated at 23 city, 34 highway, 27 combined, which that's not too bad. So you figure 27 combined, it depends on the type of driving that you do, you know, whether you're mostly on the highway or you're mostly in, the, in, in stop and go traffic, like anything else. It's how, when, and where you drive. So if you're in stop and go, it's going to just be, it's just going to be a killer. It's just going to be, it's just not going to be, not going to be good. Um, on the highway, though, if you keep the speed down, you know, you'll, you could see an average 30. And that's, that's not bad. It runs on regular gasoline. You don't have to, with the EcoBoost, the newer EcoBoost turbocharged engines, they really want premium fuel. They want more octane. And when they run the tests on them, the stated fuel economy tests may be at the higher number. The horsepower tests may be at the higher number. And when you run lower octane fuel, you get less performance overall. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get right back into this into this uh, this into the mighty car mods thing. And so I and I I apologize. I wrote this I wrote this down, but I'm gonna you know I'll I'll, I'll try to look at it and try not to read it. So basically. This morning, I tuned into Mighty Car Mods. I found out that they'd taken the bait to produce a myth-busting episode on budget fuel economy mods. And they said it was one of the most unrequested videos that they've ever done. You know, they're a perform they do performance stuff. It's fun, man. It's, they do fun budget builds. Not high budget stuff, man. They do a lot of stuff on a really tight budget. So props to Moog and Morty for an epic semi-scientific test they had a, a bubble sucking external fuel source they tested a dizzying array of cheap products using measure driving on a closed course so they i think they looked like they were on a drag strip and they were they were just kind of doing laps on a, on a drag strip and then coming back to the return road they were not on the open road which when you test on the open road presents a lot of new variables what it comes down to is this. Mighty Car Mods test showed that plugging something into your car's 12 volt outlet, clamping a magnet onto the fuel lines, gluing on a set of plastic doodads on the roof, all that stuff won't increase your fuel economy. And I tend to agree with that, man. I tried the plastic doodad thing on, on the roof. I didn't really see benefit from it some people thought it looked cool some people thought it looked ridiculous they're not on the roof anymore and i don't think it made much difference bottom line the best budget fuel economy mods are built not bought if you want to get better gas mileage you need to change the way that you drive and in order to do that you need to get feedback from the drivetrain the one that's where they do it here it is i got it the one inexpensive thing that you can buy and install that makes a difference is an OBD dongle. If your car doesn't have an instant MPG gauge, you need to check this out. Now an OBD dongle could look uh, like this one, the OBD link, this is one of the more expensive ones. I think this one is a, I think this one's Bluetooth. I've got a bigger, cheaper one that I use in the car mostly. Get one of these things for under 20 bucks, Download an app like Torque to your smartphone, and you can get all the crucial engine data. This is what's going to let you learn how to drive efficiently. Once you get the gauge info there and you use it, you understand what's going on with the engine. Then you understand where you can lighten up, coast a bit more, use inertia. That's when you'll see improvement. Now, it is possible to improve aerodynamics and therefore efficiency, but unless you know where to make the mods, you're just chasing your tail, man. I mean, you, you can try all kinds of stuff, and I have. You know, you look at some of the crazy crap that I did. Grill blockers work. Temporary grill blocking and bumper modifications work. If they didn't, you wouldn't see NASCAR teams modding their cars for qualification. Look at NASCAR, the front of NASCAR cars when they're when they're qualifying. Take a look at them up close, and you'll see plenty of tweaks, man. There's duct tape. There's all kinds of stuff that's that's covered up there. Now, a, a few weeks back over the summer, I was able to shoot a, a video at uh, 
at Pocono with, uh, with my, I got I another hat here. I'll go back to my Valvoline hat because I got something to tell you about that. With my friends from American Ethanol. So I shot with Richard Childress team. And I shot with, uh, we had a competition. I shot with their, uh, their, their driver, Austin Dillon, one of their drivers. And I mean, it was a super cool experience. So go watch that video if you haven't done it. I'll, I'll throw some more links out later on. But you can see if you're there beforehand, you can see they've done all this stuff to the car. So they just, they peel off, man. There's holes in the bumper that they open up during the race because they need the air to come through. But when they're qualifying, they, they tape it off. So you can do stuff like that to your car. Hopefully you're not going to overheat it, which is why you want the gauges. But it works. It does work. How much is the difference? It's tough to test. And then the, the other thing that that uh, that makes a difference and doesn't cost much money is flat belly pans. Smoothing out the airflow underneath the car can make a noticeable difference. That's why so many new cars have flush bellies these days. So in Slambo, I, I built the belly pan just in the in the back. I think it works. But while aerodynamic changes can show improvement, it's extremely difficult to measure. There's so many variables, so many, so many variables. So I've been ranting here. Let me go see what you, what you all are saying. Yeah, true. So I got a couple of, of lols from, from Joel. Yeah, it's just like there's you're testing in traffic. Every time you touch the brake or touch the accelerator pedal, there's a variable there. You need to slow up for someone. You need to accelerate. There is a variable. So the best thing to do is steady state testing, which Wayne at Clean MPG does a, a ton of. I mean, he's the he's the wizard at that. He sets all kinds of of of, uh, of records. And like steady state is how you want to do it. But still, the variables, wind, humidity, temperature, all that stuff. You know, are you going up or down the hill? There's a whole lot. There's a whole lot going on. So when I started the Aim Fuel Project, my dream was to test in a wind tunnel. And uh, honestly, I'm still dreaming because it's it's really expensive. There are NASCAR wind tunnels that you can get into, but you got to pay a lot of dough. I don't have it. So if I could find someone that would sponsor a video, you know, like if I could, if these guys, right, would sponsor it or 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 the Valvoline guys, if I could get them, folks. If they were into it, that's the way to do it. I'm still hoping it would happen. But I probably can't do that with a Honda because there ain't no Hondas in NASCAR. So so it's like, you know, what do you got? You got Fords, you got Chevys, and you got Toyotas. And um, I know people every place, but it's a lot of it's a lot of money, and i got to find the right car. I want to switch to something with a smaller um a sm smaller engine so the the civic is uh one five one six it's late i can't remember i think it's one six naturally aspirated it's got like one hundred and forty five thousand miles on it. i got issues with the car i've been waiting to put out an epic new slambo video but until i get the the issues resolved there's no video <laughs> there's no video coming on on that and hopefully within the next week or so you know, wrapped up and it's it's just a, it's a crazy story but it's got 145,000 miles on an engine I don't really want to spend a ton of money to rebuild it and I don't know if I want to swap something else in there I don't think it's really worth turbocharging the engine that's in there if I rebuilt it so it'd be cool to just swap to something with a small turbo and the one that's most intriguing to me right now is the one liter turbo the EcoBoost that's in either the Ford Fiesta or the uh, or the Ford uh, Focus. Could I make those cars more aerodynamic? Yeah. Are there are a lot of them out there? Mm. Fiestas never really sold well, and there probably won't be a new 2018 Fiesta in America, unfortunately. So I don't know. I don't know, man. Might so. Mr. Mayday says, my car always shows instant MPG on the dash and tracks both trip A and B separately. It really helps. Oh, yeah. So, like, you've got instant MPG, and then uh, you've got your, your current, you know, your average MPG. And if you've got two different ones, that's great. What I'll do is if I've got two, I'll do one cumulative on the tank, and then maybe I'll do the second one for trips. So when I'm doing, when I'm doing laps... 
that's that that would be the second one and then the the instant I'll keep that up most of the time so I can see what's what's going on wrench race repeat cool that's a cool handle wrench race repeat a way of life what was the thumbnail so so that thumbnail that was like an upside down inverse American flag <laughs> kind of like the times we're living in kids and you know I needed to. Uh, I'll, I'm going to update that thumbnail once once we get going. I don't know what I'm going to use, but anyway. So yeah, I I shot this uh, shot this video on NASCAR fuel economy at Pocono. It didn't get many views. I just didn't put a push on on getting it out there, and and subs just aren't working aren't working that well. But I've also been doing a bunch of stuff. Let me switch hats again. Let's switch hats again. Bunch of stuff. Um, with Valvoline, and this so this is like one of my favorite hats. I showed this in my hat video. This has, uh, that's wait, that's which one's that? Uh, let me see. Uh, I got I have, let's see. Well, this one down here, right here, that's Clay Milliken, top fuel driver. That is, uh, I think that's JJ, Jimmy Johnson, and. Uh, you might know this guy over here. I think this one is, uh, where is it? I think that's Dale. Dale Earnhardt Jr. And the one on the other side, oh, well, this one right here, that's Tanner Gray. So that's the other video, set of videos that I just shot for for Valvoline. And so you probably didn't see these because I didn't hype them in my, in my channel. But I've been doing some stuff with Valvoline and I had the opportunity to um, shoot with the Gray Motorsports NHRA Pro Stock team, which was like kind of awesome, man. I love shooting at the racetrack. It is, it's one of my favorite things, and I've never had the opportunity to, to shoot uh, drag racing on the line. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, in August, I, I spent a bunch of time with them. I, I shot with them once up in Englishtown, and I'm just stuff in the pit, and that was for a, a series that I'm pitching called Between Rounds, and the first one is already posted in the Valvoline channel. And the uh, the folks at Valvoline said, you know, the Gray Motorsports team is doing something special for for uh, the, the the start of of nationals, and they're going to have three generations of the family race it's never happened before they've never had three in nhra history they've never had three generations of one family race in a, in a division so it was uh, the grandfather johnny father shane and the son tanner all all raised tanner is is absolutely red red hot <laughs> he's red hot he's a he's a rookie Knock wood, he's going to win Rookie of the Year, and he may, hopefully he's going to end up winning a championship. He's doing really, really, really well. So I shot a bunch of videos with, with those guys, and uh, it was cool, man. Shooting on the line, they make, those pro stock cars makes, make a lot of smoke. It's different from the, the, the top fuelers and the funny cars. Those things are just insanely loud, and it's like it's painful. I don't wouldn't want to stand on the line with one of those because it just hurts when you're in a, in a stance. But pro stock, man, just like being 20 feet, 10, 15 feet away from it, just doing <laughs> I wonder warming up and doing the burnout. So there's some really cool footage in there. And again, I, I should have the uh, the links together. I will throw them in the in the bottom of of this. But wrench race repeat says. Thanks. I've been planning on starting an automotive fabrication channel eventually. I put a lot of thought into the screen name. No, it's good. That's really good. I mean, a memorable screen name is uh, memorable. <laughs> right? Like, the MPG of Manic thing, I didn't give much thought to it when I did it. And then once you've done it and you're out there, it just sort of sticks. You don't really want to change it. So there's that. So the modification, the DIY modifications that, that I did on the Civic, I had the bumper that I fabbed up. That bumper's off now. I've replaced it with a stock bumper. 
I'm back to a stock grill. I don't have the grill blocker. I'll probably go back to a grill blocker if I drive it over the winter for the upper grill. That upper grill can be blocked all the time from, from what I can tell. I don't have anything on the, on the bottom. There's nothing on the lip anymore. I do need to fix the, the stock front, like half belly pan, because it's hanging a little bit. And if something's hanging down, man, it's creating drag, literally. So getting that back up, whether it's with zip ties or whatever it is that I, that I do, it is, is kind of important. I've got side skirts that I fabbed up with just like Home Depot stuff. And the back belly pan is coroplast. It's coroplast, some, some nuts and bolts. Some really good, um, some really good duct tape, and I think it makes a difference because the Civics have this problem. They call it the parachute problem. Or if you've seen this, if you watch that video, I kind of go through it. Civic jockeys will cut holes in their back bumper, or they'll they'll like cut a big chunk out of the bottom of the bumper to release air, because air gets up in there, and they call it the parachute problem because they say it holds the car back. My theory was, rather than cutting a hole and making the back of your car look ugly, why don't we just uh, fab up a belly pan? So I have like this two-piece coroplast thing that's been on there for for a year. I need to go go under there and uh, I haven't I haven't checked the I haven't checked the bolts in uh, in, a, in a month or two, so we need to make sure that they're still tight. But you want to use really good duct tape when you do that. I've been using Gorilla tape. Like Gorilla tape is, I like it a lot. I mean, it was my favorite, but 3M just came out with a new duct tape that's got uh, a different sort of surface to it. I mean, it's almost like a, feels pebbly, like getting close to grip tape. So I got some of that, uh, man, where was I? I think it was down in Charlotte. I needed to tape up some of my, some of my camera gear. And, um, comes in all kinds of colors. So you can match it. You look on those stock cars, man. They've got like there's lots of duct tape, and they use lots of other stuff too. When the cars, when the cars get hit and they have to put them back together, they have this like, it's like a like a mat glue, like a big mat of like, <laughs> it's like tar that they just slap on the car and then they, and then they peel it off. Watching um, a race up close from from the pit box area is just intense. And, and so hopefully if, if this um, Between Rounds series, if I, can, if I can get them to green light the whole thing, I want to do some, do some stuff with Hendrick. I don't know. It gets tough, man, because that's like as big dollar as it gets. I don't know whether it'll let me in or not. Don't know. I was super lucky to get in with um, American Ethanol and the, and, the, and the children's team to have that level of, of access. And, uh, yeah, you know, I should just try and cut and paste some of this stuff. So what are you guys thinking about? Have you done anything to your to your vehicles to make them more fuel efficient? Have you, have you bolted anything on? Have you tried any weird weird contraptions? I've You know, I've... I've always been wary of it, and the only aftermarket product that I tested was the, um, what were those things called? They're like aero tabs. I forget what the name of it was. I didn't really see a difference. Joe just drives alone. That does it. That does it. Hold on a sec. Let me go into the videos here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut and paste some stuff. Hold on one second. Yeah, NASCAR fuel economy. That video got it has a whopping 650 views. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut and paste that. Bear with me for a sec here. I can figure out how to do this. Live dashboard. All right, so I want to go here. All right, so I'm going to start pasting this stuff in into the uh, description. Hopefully it doesn't mess things up.
We don't want anything to uh, to lock up on us. That would suck, wouldn't it? I wonder whether it's saving things or not. Ooh, got a couple more comments. Hold on one sec. So, uh, Bench Race Repeat says, Fiberglass is pretty cheap as well and surprisingly easy to work with. I'm planning a fiberglass belly pan on my Dodge Daytona. Yeah, so for underneath, like for underneath the car, you want something even even tougher than fiberglass, you could try Kelvar. And uh, that's what they use. They use Kelvar on the uh, like rally cross cars. Um, Alberta Bad Driver says, I still want to see that Hyundai Ionic MPG review, but it doesn't matter. I just bought a 17 Civic SI. Nice. First trip out got me 61.4 miles per gallon. That's that's pretty crazy. Just normal highway driving. 61.4. So you were like really light on it. Not going too quick. I haven't been in the SI yet. I've been in um, been in a couple of, of Civics so far. I was in a coupe and I was in a uh, hatchback turbo. They're great, man. You know, I've I've had a lot of I've had a lot of Civics. I have an Ionic on the schedule for next week, and um, it's gonna be it'll be in it'll be in uh, the MPGomatic channel. So I mean, like, I you know I I have gigs, right? I do other I do gigs for other for other companies, and my like primary gig has been. Uh, hold on, I want to show you what I'm driving today. It's pretty sick. My primary gig has been shooting and writing for Autobytel for, for I guess, like four years now. Mostly writing. And it was mostly just video in the beginning, and then it turned into video and writing. So, so I am, uh, I'm in this. This is what just showed up. I don't know if you can tell what that is. Who knows what that is? I'm not going to tell you. Anybody know what that is? I'll take some. You got to guess at it. It's the most expensive thing that I've had in the driveway so far. <laughs> it's not my farm. It's not my car. But uh, it is where I live. So life's pretty good. Alberta Drive, Alberta just says, no, was driving it normal. at speed limit with cruise on. It's amazing to drive so good. I right, Hopefully I'll get to drive the SI soon. Mr. Mayday says, I've always heard that adding an intake and exhaust helps with MPG. Is that true or still the case? You know, I don't know. You got to test. It's got to be tested. So I'm not going to say that it does or it doesn't. It could change from car to car. And w the thing that's going to make the difference is when you, put a, when you put an intake and exhaust on, you should probably tune it. And when you tune it, lots of things can, can change. Uh... I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to S Vine Hunt. I'll come back to that. Santucky says BMW i8 close, but no. Joey says Caddy. No. I love, man, the CTS V. Um, what, the CTS V Coupe. I don't think they make those anymore. And Mr. Mr. Mayday says, looks like a Lexus. You are. You're right. It's a Lexus. Which one is it? Guess which one it is. I feel guilty for driving this thing, man. Alberta says, I've usually gotten around three miles per hour with a canine intake on my GM stuff. Three three miles per gallon, sorry. Better. Three miles per gallon better with the canine intake. Pedro! <laughs> Bingo, Pedro! You got it. How you doing, man? Did you Everything okay with, um, with the Hurricanes, man? He's just like these hurricanes are just nuts. Just nuts. Slide Hunt says 92 to 95 Civic VX are awesome and get around 55 miles per gallon highway if driven in lean burn mode. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about getting a VX before I bought the HX, but they were just impossible to find. You know, I love those bubble backs are cool, but I so I ended up with the with the HX coupe. And it's been, I've been in it three years. It's, it's been, knock wood. It was, it was pretty rock solid for a while, but um, yeah, it's got an issue right now, basically. You know, so I'm not gonna tell you the whole story, but basically, Slambo's in limp mode right now, which means that it won't rev 
past like 3,300 RPM. Pedro says, yes, gas is hard to come by. Very happy to happen to have a high mileage Yaris. I'll bet. I'll bet. It's scary. My uh, sister-in-law lives down on the West Coast, and she was up with us for a while. And it's just, you know, these one after another, Houston, Florida, now the one today, Maria hitting Puerto Rico. It's, you know, whether you believe in climate change or not, or whether you believe that humans are influencing it or not, it's happening, and we need to be um, we need to be prepared for it. And I don't ever remember a season like this with three big, insane storms in a row. And right now, Jose's turning off the Jersey Shore and just. It's like beach erosion, so we're lucky we're not getting hit. Pedro says, shortage of gas, food, electricity, felt like a zombie apocalypse was coming. So you got to be ready, man. You got to put stuff, you got to put stuff away. I mean, I don't have stuff put away if, when, if it happens here. We lived through Sandy. How many years ago was Sandy? We lived through Sandy here. And, uh, I mean, that like that can change me forever, forever. Alberta Bad Driver says, I'm a GM guy through and through, but the Civic SI is the best driving car in the class. I drove everything. The last one was a 16 Colorado extended cab two-wheel drive 3.6. Best I did with that was 37 miles per gallon. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I, know, I like the Civic. I just I just switched out of the Elantra GT Touring today. I swapped from the GT Elantra GT Touring into the Lexus LC500. You know, it's like four times as expensive. I really like the I really like the the Elantra. I mean, there's there's some great choices in that in that class. Now I've got these a bunch of great hatchbacks, and they're all they're all real different. The one thing that I don't like about the Civic, I mean, and I've owned so many Hondas, is that the bumpers are so busy. There's so much going on. Someone's going to come out hopefully with aftermarket bumpers that aren't so busy. But the way aftermarket bumpers are, it'll be just as, as ridiculous. Wrench re Repeat says, I had an idea for fin wheels that draw air from underneath the car, making it a low pressure zone, creating downforce, and possibly reducing undercar turbulence. Probably far-fetched, though. Yeah. I don't know. Fin wheels that draw air from underneath the car and making it... How about just like a, a vacuum? Like something that, like you know, like an electric fan, it just sucked the sucked the low pressure out. Wonder, what, wonder if that would work. Alberta says that's Imperial MPG. You had a fourteen cruise that managed fifty six miles per gallon. Rent race would be at an eighty nine. So I guess I had a, I had an eighty. It was an eighty three Civic S before they had an SI, which was just like the really boxy one, and then. Uh, I had an 86 CRX SI, which, man, I miss that car. That's, you know, like, there's a lot that I let go, man. My GTOs, uh, the CRX, I wish I still had them. So I'm the S2000 I have. I never want to give that up because you do. Pedro says, what do I think of all the Japanese OEMs going with the same basic modular platform for most of their new models? Yeah, so I mean, Toyota's doing that with the, uh, what do they call the name of the platform? I'm drawing a blank. But, you know, it's under the Corolla. It's under the under the Prius. If they can save money to keep costs down for, for consumers, I don't think it's a bad thing. Alberta says, I'm getting old. I've given a performance and gone for full MPG. I damn near bought a Honda Ionic, but the Civic SI drives like a sports car and yet still gets incredible fuel economy. Yep. The trick with the trick with these small forced induction cars is the engines are tiny. And if you can stay out of the boost, you gain huge benefits. So you're gonna, you know, when you're accelerating, you're gonna use fuel. There's no way around that, but 
once you're up to speed, you lighten up. It's an awesome thing. So I'm fascinated by the by the tiniest one, the the Ford One Liter, three cylinder engine. I got great numbers out of the Fiesta when I tested it. I haven't tested it in the Focus yet. I'm going to see if I can get one, but I'm thinking that might be what I swap into next. I don't know. You know, it's like it's a weird thing. Whenever, whatever you own, when it's time to sell it, you're like, should I sell it? I don't know. Should I keep it? Pedro says, Prius, Camry, upcoming Corolla, RAV4, all from the same platform. Fiesta, no more in the U.S. Yeah. Sad, man. Just sad. And a new one, the European one, looks looks pretty nice. But maybe people will import the, the noses and stuff. Who knows? Well, I mean, you can't tell what all the differences are. But I think there's some significant differences in the interior. Alberta says, exactly. I'm a diehard speed limit cruise control guy. And it works. 61.4 on my first tank. That's 16K in the car. Proves it. Yeah. Does it... Does the SI have adaptive cruise in it or just, just regular cruise? Got 890Ks on my first tank, and that was 87 octane because dealership fill. I'm looking forward to the second tank running 93 octane. You may see a little more with it. I don't know how the tune is on that. I haven't read up on it. But the the kicker is with these small direct-injected, Forced induction engines, they want more octane. If the factory tune does something with it, that's great. But if you go to an aftermarket tune, then you can really take advantage of it. If you're if you're getting uh, if you're getting high octane fuel. So you probably can't get it in Canada, but if you put E30 in it, 30% ethanol, then uh, your octane is like higher than what you're going to see with normal premium and the cost is less than regular so yeah the SI says it recommends 93 so so if they put 87 in man so there's probably a knock sensor that that pulls the timing back so that it doesn't blow up and when you put the 93 in you get more performance only rear camera none of that self-driving crap I, you know, I, I like I like the, the the lane keep. I like adaptive cruise. The more I use it, the more I like become comfortable with it. Adaptive cruise is is a great it's a great thing. Only blend only ten percent. So like ten percent is is whatever. It's like almost everything is is ten percent these days on a modern turbocharged engine there's no using no reason to use e0 it's just going to cost a lot more to get zero percent ethanol it makes no sense to use it in a in a current turbocharged engine in a weed whacker in an old boat maybe in an old an old classic car yeah renter at repeat says wish i could find one of those pre-80 honda 600s they can't haul much more than two people and a small dog but with a modern lean burn swap, it would get great MPG and still be fun on the back roads. They're out there. So there's a, if you're on Twitter, there's a a, a Twitter feed called JS10. And uh, it's one of my favorites. Favorite Twitter feeds of all. They they just retweet from, or they, they tweet from, they comb Craigslist everywhere, and they tweet up all these uh, all these cool old Japanese cars, man. So I want to do I want to do like an older an older classic at some point. So like like a, a Datsun five ten, or I'd love a Mazda. I would absolutely love the Mazda. Alberta says we don't have uh, full on regular ethanol free at the pump here. It's all blended ten percent ethanol. Yeah, so fifteen percent is starting to be a, a thing a thing here now. It's spreading out from the from the Midwest, and that's that's an okay thing for these engines because it's a little more octane, burns cleaner, burns cooler, and so that's that's a cool thing. Now you've seen that big green Explorer in some of the videos lately. It was my mother-in-law's. We inherited it when she passed away, and 
what I didn't realize until I got it here and I was like looking up for parts that it's actually a flex fuel Explorer. It's a 2003. It's a flex fuel. So when things got really, really bad, my system was up here. I started thinking, boy, I wonder if there's any place where, um, you know, I can, I could fill up with, with ethanol. You know, like I've never tried it. And there's like one place in South Jersey. There was a guy out in, in Pennsylvania on the other side of the river. He closed down, unfortunately. But uh, guy in South in South Jersey is still there, Mighty Joe's, and he brings his ethanol in from Pennsylvania. So I went down and I got five gallons of ethanol in a. I, I bought a new Jerry Jerry can. There might be a Jerry can review on the on the channel soon, but uh, yeah, I got five gallons and I I just wanted to see like okay, this Explorer has never run anything higher than E10. It's always run E10 as far as I know. And so what happens if I start if I if I pour some E85 into the tank. And uh, yeah, I'll give you a little bit of hint on like foreshadowing, or not really foreshadowing, whatever. Preview. I put two two gallons in. It was on an eighth. I put two gallons in. I drove around for a while. Ran just fine. I put some more regular gas in to get it up to like above a quarter tank. I threw in like another four gallons. It was absolutely fine. It was it was absolutely, absolutely fine. And uh, and I got another like two and a half gallons in a can, so I'm going to pour that in, and I'm going to run it with this with this higher ethanol blend for a little while. We're going to change the fuel filter a couple of times, and maybe we'll cut them in half to see what they look like. Because the one that's on there now, who knows if it was ever changed? The Explorer's got like 130 thousand on it. So I picked up a an OEM Motorcraft fuel filter and we're going to swap that some hopefully sometime in the next week but he says please do i hate my gas cans See, the new gas cans just suck you know they've got all this uh the safety stuff in there and it just it just makes them a pain in the neck i'm getting i'm getting uh text from my son he wants to build motorcycles Alberta says, years ago, I used to work at an ethanol producing plant. We shipped it all south to the U.S., though. I don't think we'll see lo lower than e E10 as a country, even though the petroleum people would like to get rid of it. We're always going to have at least E10, and it's going to go to E15 not too long ago. And with more and more of these turbocharged small engines. I think we're going to see E30 kind of be the new like super premium. There's some cool stuff on the uh, Oak Ridge National Lab website. I don't know whether it's been taken down by the new administration or not yet, but a lot of research has been done into, into it. Do I, do I think Wrench rate, he says, do I think the 99 Accord would ha could handle E15? I haven't tried it in, in my 99 Civic. I haven't tried anything higher than E10 in my Civic. I, th I think what they say is up to 2000, and back to 2001, you're okay with E15. But the manufacturers have been, some of them have been slow to certify for it. You gotta figure if it's good with ten, it's probably good with fifteen. You know, it's already can handle it. Maybe it like loosens up more stuff than has already been loosened up. Is it gonna dry stuff out? Don't know. Yeah, it tracks moisture, so it may over time rust rust fuel lines. So. The funny thing is, when they put dry gas into your, when you get a, when you put in a bottle of dry gas, what is it made out of? Google, what is dry gas made of? <laughs> We're going to try that. What is dry gas? Dry gas is a very helpful fuel additive that is used to remove water from gasoline and prevent water contaminated gasoline from freezing. 
While the solution itself is actually called dry gas, there's one of, whatever, dry gas. Let's go to Wikipedia. <laughs> so ethanol is alcohol, right? Wikipedia says, dry gas is an alcohol-based additive used in automobiles to prevent any water in the fuel from freezing or to, remove, or to restore combustive power to gasoline spoiled by water. Some brands contain methanol and some contain isopropyl alcohol. I said, did I say that right? Isopropyl alcohol. Some states require a 10 to 15 percent ethanol solution to be sold at refueling stations. All right. So, so, so they got this into the into someone's edited this. Most current gasoline powered automobiles can safely run up to a 10 percent ethanol solution without any modification. However, at 15 percent or above, older vehicles may require replacing the fuel lines to prevent degradation and rupture and the electric fuel pump may need modification to prevent ethanol dry rot. The belief that dry gas is not needed because of a significant amount of ethanol is largely true because ethanol is a drying agent. Due to this fact, it has an affinity for water, which can be present in the atmosphere. But since environmental concerns have caused fuel systems to be closed, it works effectively on the moisture inside the tank, which was already present. The water that has been absorbed then reduces the issue with freezing fuel lines. The action of adding dry gas which is anhydrous methanol or azeotropic isopropyl alcohol, is suggested to mix with absorbed water, lowering the freezing point of the now water and alcohol solution lower than it would be mixed with ethanol, allowing the fuel lines to better resist freezing while non-frozen water will then be removed when either solution is used by the engine. Yep. So... <laughs> Is ethanol a good thing in really old cars? No, unless you've modified it. Um, oh, and then I was going to, I got like a third hat that I was going to wear. Like, what else are you up to? You probably don't know this, but I'm right for eBay Motors. And uh, I'm the designated blocker on the eBay Motors on the road tour. They're rebuilding a 67 Mustang Fastback. So it's Rutledge Wood. Um, KC Mathau and uh, Mike Finnegan. KC Matthew was on uh, Fast and Loud. Finnegan is, is Roadkill and, and Hot Rod. And so and they're rebuilding this this 67 Mustang down in Georgia at the Kenwood Rod Shop. I've been blogging it since um, like early this springtime. Every week knocking out a blog. They took it to four shows over the summer. It was at Ford Nationals in Carlisle. It was at Good Guys in Columbus. Then it went to Woodward Dream Cruise in Detroit, and then it was then it was at uh, Good Guys in Pleasanton, California. Now it's back in Georgia, getting finished up, and it will show it at at, um, at the SEMA show for the first time complete, and it will be auctioned off live for for charity. So it's fun stuff, man. Rutledge and and the boys have have designed some pretty some pretty crazy things. I'm hoping that I get to that I get to like. I, the dream is to drive it and not wreck it for me <laughs> before they auction it off. Hopefully, I'll be at SEMA and uh, and I'll be there to see it finish. I've seen it twice. Like I, I see the pictures and I write about it from the pictures and doing interviews over the over the phone. I've seen it twice at different stages. Early in the summer at, at in Carlisle, the Ford Nationals, and then just last month in Detroit at the Woodward Dream Cruise. Woodward Dream Cruise was just nuts, man. <laughs> if you love cars, it's like Mecca, man. There's there's nothing else like it in the world. Think of the best cruise night you've ever been to in your life. And uh, Woodward Dream Cruise is like a thousand times that or ten thousand times that. So many cars, everything you could possibly imagine seeing. With a huge slant towards American stuff, but everything. It's there, man. It's just there. It's incredible. So I had got to spend time with them, those two shows, and SEMA. So don't have my eBay Motors stuff, but uh, you know I should hold on. I should put a link. I should put an eBay Motors link in there too. All these things. It is man. So Mr. Rockfish was happening, man. So this is I went through before. This has, uh, I got uh, Dale, whoop, 
Dale, uh, Tanner Gray, Clay Milliken, and uh, Jimmy Johnson. I got all three on there. <laughs> it's my one, uh, my one, uh, it's not an heirloom, man. It's just like a cool thing that I got, that I got to, got to do this, this summer, man. I'm like, I, I'm the first to tell you that I've been incredibly lucky. I will probably die broke. <laughs> But I will have had some incredible experiences. Oh. I'm just adding stuff here to the uh, description. All right, so that's in there now. Now you got that one in there. That should show up. Somehow. Have I seen a video on the E Charge Hybrid? I don't think I have. I'm going to go look at that. After this, I'm going to go check it out. And, and Mr. Rocker says, Die broke, who cares? Cannot take the money with you. Live life. Heck yeah. There's a really great. Uh, Hunter S. Thompson quote about like screaming across the finish line sideways with the tires smoking and saying, man, it was a heck of a ride. And that's pretty much what I believe in. Hey, somebody gave us a thumbs down. Isn't that awesome? Oh, well. <laughs> it's a stream of consciousness. And look, I'm all like kind of shiny tonight, man. What else do they want to get in there? Oh, I wanted to find some of those uh, the Valvoline stuff, too. Now, they don't have it uh, separated into a playlist. And there's so much content in this, in this channel right now. So I'll just I'm gonna just link to the YouTube Valvoline video thing, and you can look for great motorsport stuff in here. And I shot a total of five videos for them for the Pro Stock team. Three are in this. Three are there public there's two more that uh they're up but it looks like it might be unlisted alberta says my only bad habit is new cars every 15 to 24 months i buy a new one keeps me getting up and going to work and makes me happy says screw everyone else oh man mr rocker says that he has that bad habit too and you're wanting that. So, have you driven that WRX SDI? I mean, I liked it. I like it. But it's pretty stiff. You know, it's like at this point in my life, I'm like, man, I want something that's got like a little bit more. Because I've been driving cars that are <laughs> are are on the ground, man. The 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 Civic, the Civic and uh, and the S2000, man. They're like they're pretty they're pretty low. So the the WRX is stiff. It's really the STI is really stiff. The WRX I think is a little bit. Um, it's not as harsh. So I so if you're thinking about it, man, go drive those two back to back. And can you get a WRX to be as fast as an STI if you want it to be? Yeah, it's cool, man. They're cool. I love Subarus. They're great cars. They hold their value really, really well. I've done a bunch of uh, done a bunch of listicles for Autovitel over the last months and and uh, I've done stuff on de depreciation WRX is holder value Subaru's overall holder value really really well last few vehicles have been an F150 and a, and a 2016 Durango Durango I, I like I, both those are great man they're both great vehicles which reminds me I got to write about 
I'm going to write about the Durango this weekend. What day is today? Wednesday. <sighs> deadlines, man. It's like deadlines are constantly marching on. So I've got uh, a couple things in there. The NASCAR fuel economy thing, if you haven't watched that, check it out. The Valvoline stuff, if you want to watch that out, you want to check that out. Oh, you know, yeah, Mighty Car Mods. So you can see the one I was originally talking about. Here it is. 327,000 views in 19 hours. Nothing like having a channel with subscribers. <laughs> they do great stuff, man. Mighty Car Mods, Budget Fuel Economy Myths. So the bottom line, man, getting back to the point, if you can buy it, it probably doesn't improve your fuel economy. If you can buy it and bolt it on, it probably doesn't improve your fuel economy. It takes some work to get better fuel economy. The NASCAR driving school. Yeah, you know, I'd like to. I'd like to. I've driven on... Uh, I got to drive at uh, at Bristol at a, at a Mustang thing back in 2010. That was kind of cool. I had no idea what Bristol was. But I love driving on the racetrack because you can go as fast as you want. You know, and uh, it's relatively safe. I do. I have a track event coming up in about a month at Monticello Motor Club in New York, New York State for the uh, Input Press Association. So I get to drive all kinds of stuff there. Like one lap at a time, though. Ford EcoBoost versus Dodge Eco Diesel. Which is my preference and why? Um. So, so Eco Diesel in the in the in the Ram fifteen hundred versus EcoBoost in in the F one fifty. The Ram's going to give you better fuel economy. Um, I like them both. I really do. I think the the bigger EcoBoost engine is gonna is gonna be faster. I like those. You know, Mr. Rockfish had a had had one. I like it, man. I love the the Raptor was one of the best things I've ever driven in my entire life. <laughs> Another video you should go look at if you haven't seen that one where I got to drive the Raptor out in uh, out in Andrew Borrego. That was just like, that one was a bucket list. And I did two more truck trips this spring. I did uh, the Colorado ZR2 launch with, with Chevy out in Colorado. And I did a I did, did a Ram Power Wagon drive out in in uh, in Arizona with, with Ram trucks. That was unbelievable. I have video on that, on the, on both of those, I have 360 video. So whether you guys are digging the 360 video or not, the 360 video that I have on the Power Wagon is insane. We went to Cinders. This, this I think it's a federal park. It's, it's a volcano. It's like black, a sea of black volcanic sand. Oh, man. So I this the video that I have of that in 360, it's like, I don't know. 50 minutes long just just it's huge so it's one of those things where i need to put music on it so that if you want to just like put on the goggles and watch that's just it man you're just like taking a ride into the into the crater that was just nuts it was nuts so alberta says the tune pull hot air from the engine bay colorado was three months gone highway consistently with the cayman if you're using the boost for get fuel economy and Eagle with motors are not for trucks. Yeah, it's you gotta stay out of the boost. You gotta stay out of the boost. 
Yeah. Speed has a huge effect on, on fuel economy. There's just there's no way around it. And when you're in something that's shaped like a pickup truck, they're bricks. So, I mean, 18 to 19 is not bad for... I did a big trip with a um, Transit, with a big Ford, high roof Ford Transit. And uh, I got to go look. I'm, this video is sitting on my, on my drive. I got to go finish it. But I was able to get around 20 out of it, which is pretty crazy. So, but it was not the diesel. It was the, it was the Evo Boost. Can I get as well? Eight speed. And so the Durango has, it's got cylinder deactivation. Right? Doesn't the Hemi have cylinder deactivation? It works pretty well, I found. And the I thought the, the cylinder deactivation in the Corvette seemed kind of clunky, but Dodge has it worked out pretty well. All right, so let me see what I got here in the links. I got Mighty Car Miners, NASCAR Fuel Economy, Valvoline Gray Motorsports, eBay Motors Blog, all the stuff we talked about. YouTube likes it. The algorithms like it. When you push to other uh, other videos, they like to see a longer watch time. So I've been on here babbling for a little while. It, thanks, Joe. Yeah, that was a that was a trip, man. That was a trip. The guy I rode with was from. Uh, from Motor Trend, you meet like all you meet all kinds of cool people. Most of the people you meet on the on the media runs are, are cool. There are some people that are not cool, but most of them are cool. Snoopy's working on a thirty eight hundred supercharged Buick. That's kind of cool. Is that is that a uh, what model? Riviera. Ooh, I love Rivieras, man. I would like a if I could do like a sixties or seventies Riviera. ZR2 is awesome. ZR2 is a really awesome truck. Like if I like if I could buy any truck, I don't know, man. I'm kind of torn because each one, the ZR2, the Raptor, the Power Wagon, they're all great off-road trucks, and they just have different, you know, it's like different flavors. That big Power Wagon really surprised me. From a capability standpoint, it, if you've got to go in and do some work someplace, and you've got to go someplace nasty, that might be the one to 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 go with because it's got disconnecting sway bars and lockers front front and rear, and it's huge. I mean, it just feels like it can go through anything. Where the Raptor just feels like it can fly over everything, and the Colorado, for me, is the right size truck because I like trucks that are a little bit smaller. I think like full size trucks are just huge. I never bought it. I end up off road ninety nine percent of the time and wrecking it. Last TJ started as a one owner mid condition, and ended up not being good. Yeah, so you saw the TJ that we had. We had to get rid of it. We may do another one down the road at some point, but uh, that one had to go. That one had to go, and the the Ram Cummins had to go, and there's a there's a new uh, there's a new old Ram. So 2000, 2002, Ram fifteen hundred in the driver, forty five thousand of aftermarket parts, and look like a chunker. <laughs> yeah, I just don't have the money to do high buck builds. Like all my money goes to paying taxes. You know, like so, so the, that upside down reverse flag thing. If this tax, if the tax thing goes through and they take away our deduction for property taxes, I'm screwed pretty much because I pay like over 12 grand in property taxes a year for my little three bedroom ranch. That's why I'm broke, man. It all goes to the township. S2000 is just, it's sitting in the garage. I took it out uh, a couple of weeks ago, drove around a little bit. I take it out and run it every couple of weeks. I have to get some tires on it, and uh, I'm waiting to get some spare change. Looks like I could have some spare change maybe in the next week or so. 
So I'm looking forward to um, getting some tires on it. 12th, yeah. Yeah, so it's, dude, I paid that a month. A month. I also pay for my own garbage pickup. I have my own well. I have my own septic tank. <laughs> I don't get any of those services from my town. You've been saying tires for two years. So yeah, I've been saying tires for two years. I wish I did like I wish I had parked in the garage like five years ago. Because um it'd be worth more, man. It'd be worth more than it is. It would have a couple less nicks in it. But it was like the the day where my kid comes home and says, Dad, it needs tires. It does? Cool. Park it in the garage. And it hasn't been down it hasn't been out much since then. Because my it's my goal to hold on to that one forever. I've let so many cars go that I'm kicking myself for letting them go. And that one I want to hold on forever. I my dream is to like not pay a thousand dollars in taxes every month. Move someplace where I can get a big barn and just put some some cars away to to like you know that's whatever the inheritance is. It's a bunch of stupid cars. I love my S two thousand man. It's just if you've never driven one, you can't fully understand what it's like. It's just so simple and so basic and so pure. There's no distractions. There's nothing fancy about it. It's the seats are nice. The dash is just really basic. If you don't like digital, tough luck because it's this like digital thing. Looks like it came from a from a, I don't know a fighter jet, but it's just so dialed in and and tight. The transmission is just it's maybe the best that I've ever driven. Yeah, exactly. It's just like mine's like like all three of them have done this where like the second gear gate gets a little weird. So you can't go into second too too quickly or you'll you'll get a grind and a and a and a mess. But otherwise it's just man, it's just it's perfect. And this car is not I have not done any mods to it. I don't want to do any mods to it. Kids are like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you lower it? Why don't you put a supercharger on? I'm like, no man. Supercharger, not necessary, because the car is already like perfectly balanced. And if I lower it, I won't be able to get it in the driveway. Bad enough now. Alberta only regret car was a 2009 Cobalt SS Turbo. They were pretty cool. Stage one tune, K and intake, and cast downpipe. Fastest car I've ever owned. And I traded full size so far for my business. Yeah, they were cool. They were cool. They were like not um, like people didn't appreciate those enough. I've never driven one, and I just like I got into this, and I just missed being able to drive it. Like I was getting 2009. I was getting GMs. I had. Um, I think it was the same motor as that. I had the the uh, Solstice Coupe, not the convertible. I had the Coupe. It was really rare. And then right after, right around the time that I got it, it was like boom. They said Pontiac's no more. Might need a singer. I could. Car's all about speed, but handling and driving feels like not a Hellcat. And so I'm like, yeah, yeah. I did. I drove. I like. I didn't get to drive the Hellcat for a long time. And then when I finally had the chance to drive it, I drove it on a wet track in West Virginia. I can't remember the name of the track in West Virginia at a at a uh, Fiat Chrysler event. And it was hysterical. That car is so ridiculously fast. One built with competition. You know, yeah, you should have saved it in storage, man. That's just it. We let them. We let these things go because it's like you need your down payment for something else, and we're we're like stuck. We're stuck, you know. You gotta have, you gotta pay for it somehow, and uh, it's already depreciated. And if it's something that has some collectability to it, particularly if it has a manual transmission these days, those things just are more and more rare. Nobody wanted a car with a manual transmission when it was new, and they still don't. But a used one, oh yeah, if it's the right model, it's worth so much more than the automatic. I don't know. So if I get that Focus or Fiesta, it would have to be a manual because I don't know if they did the one liter with the automatic. Those four dual clutch automatics were junk. They were not good. They were not good at all. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then, if, you know, if I have to get a, 
heaven forbid if I have to get a real job and I can't just keep freelancing, then I need something that's more dependable. It was too good to store, though it drove well. Beat every Mustang GT and Car OSS and Corvette I raced. Funny enough, the import guys wouldn't race me. They knew it was too fast. I have not been in the Type R Civic yet. Hopefully there'll be one at Monticello and I'll get to drive it on a track or stuff like that to be driven, not the street. That's the thing. So I've got this, this Lexus LC500, an un, unbelievable car, V8. I don't know what the numbers are horsepower wise, but it's you know, somewhere north of 400. Just cracking. I mean, it's, it's pretty fast and it sounds great. The exhaust note is awesome. When it downshifts, it automatically blips for you. On, it's not automatic. It blips for you on the downshift. It just sounds great. It's so fast, but it's like, it's a ticket, man. It's a, it's a ticket. I can't afford that, man. I, it's a, this, like this. I'll do this, this the Slambo story. I got pop for. Uh, hold on, I got another picture for you. Another picture. Let me find my pictures on my phone here. You know, this I downloaded a new update, and it's just uh, for my phone. It's just annoying. So, so the other day this happened. Uh oh, which. Uh oh, that happened. Yeah. Bottom line, I didn't get a ticket. I did not I did not get a ticket. But I gotta get it fixed. I can't drive it now. It was like it was supposed to be inspected back in March, and because the check engine lights on and it's in limp mode, it won't pass inspection. So there's no point to going to inspection. I would have gotten a red sticker. Well they caught me in a in a ambush. Yeah, I have not driven a Type R Civic yet. Alberta said he almost bought one. Dealer wanted 13 over. I'm not doing that deal. If I can get one for MSRP, I'll buy it and trade in the SI. My Cobalt was faster than a stock Civic. I grew by a lot. Nice. A lot of views on a Tacoma Vich. Do a new one, maybe TRD Pro model. I had one before the revision. And I did like I did a boot review, Tacoma boot review for Keen along with the and then the new one came out. I can't remember if I did that for Ferrari by Tell. It's a big freaking blur, man. Can get paid from YouTube that way, I'm sure. Yeah, it's like YouTube, YouTube money. You gotta have a lot of views, man, to make to make decent money off it. When you take into account the amount of time that it takes to make a video, to shoot a video and edit a video. You know, like a good review could take you a day to shoot and a day to edit easily could could end up being three days total and you need to look at the the number of views that something gets and then you multi you like cut it down to thousands because you're talking about CPM like it it's like it's like your the amount of money per thousand views and for a while there it was like two dollars CPM so if you got ten thousand views you just made 20 bucks. If you got 100,000 views, you just made 200 bucks. If you've worked for three days to make 200 bucks, you're not eating. If you're living in your mom and dad's basement, <clears throat> it's cool. You got 200 bucks that you didn't have before. But if you own the basement, you're going to lose it. So, you know, at some point, I'll do the why I did what I did thing, but YouTube's a weird thing. You have channels that are huge that can that can pull a million views. Those guys are getting higher CPMs, and CPMs are higher than two dollars now. It depends on what what the videos do. But so if someone's done a video with a, a million views, you slice it up by thousands, and then you multiply it by the CPM. You can figure out how much they how much they made. Some people are making six figures at it. Some people are making millions of dollars a year at it, but they're huge channels. 
and so I made a decision a while, a long time ago, like, man, I like doing this, but I need to find a different way to do it. So when I took the gig with Autobytel, it was, I get paid per video. So I can barely afford to live where I live doing, doing it. I won't get into like exact details, but I get paid per video. Don't know how much longer it'll last. They'll watch this and they'll probably say, hey, you're talking about the deal? You're out. I might have to cut this. <laughs> I can probably, I think I can edit that out. Anyway, I've been babbling for a while. Been taking up all your time. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do a review on that gas can because this one I'm happy with it so far. I just want to use it a few more times before I, you know, got to be happy with it. Otherwise, it's not giving them any, any boost. She reviewed dash cams. Find something new that will not only protect in case of accident, but work for recording fun mountain driving. Yeah, man, mountain driving stuff is cool. That's cool. You can, I mean, like mountain driving stuff, you could just hang a GoPro. You know, you just get a GoPro. You don't have to buy the latest one. You get a good mount. This is, a, I use a three. GoPro three. And uh, this is a single suction cup. Double suction cups are much more stable. So a double gecko is a good one to use. I've used Sony cameras. I've used uh, contours. Don't buy the Hero 5 if you don't have the money. Get a get a 4 because the quality is still pretty good. And uh, you can save a bunch of money. And, and having multiple cameras helps a lot. Do you like the Garmin verb? Big and ugly. Want something small and permanent. Yeah, permanent is good. There's a lot of stuff coming out now where, you know, it, it has other types of uh, other features. I just saw one today, Raven. I don't know. Some of these companies are going to stick around. Some of them aren't. So yeah, gas can review. I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a. Hey, we're running ethanol in the in the uh, in the Explorer. This is what it. This is what the uh, fuel filters look like. I'm thinking about, I got this like stuff from Keen. I might be able to get a, a, another pair of boots from Keen, and I want to do, uh, I'm going to bounce this on off you and see if you think this is crazy or not. Driving shoes. Like I, I'm wearing, I'm still wearing them. This is my favorite pair of driving shoes. But look at that, man. That's, that's not good, man. I, I need new shoes. So a driving shoe's got a rolled heel, basically. Right, and, and it's pretty thin. I need a new pair of shoes. I'm thinking about getting Puma Drift Cats because there's a new version out that doesn't look ridiculous. And I was, and I thought, hey, would maybe driving shoe reviews would be kind of cool. <laughs> so I asked Keen. I said, you guys have anything on a roll heel? No, we have nothing on a roll heel. I said, what about uh, like work boots? What kind of work boots do you have that are that are good for driving? So I got some recommendations from from them and. Fingers crossed, I'm going to see if I can get a pair and, and, and try them out. Because I like wearing shoes that aren't too thick, but sometimes you got to wear boots. I have um, those big Tacomas or Wellington, so you don't drive in those. But I have a, a, I forget what the name of it was. You've seen them, and I, you call them my track shoes. My shoe in most of these when I go to the track, they're steel toes. So if like a car runs over my toes, I'm not going to get, going to get, uh, Gonna get crushed, but I wanted to find some boots that are that are good for driving. In. I have another set of, of uh, DC Pro Specs that I like a lot. They're high tops. DC doesn't make them anymore. They're a little bit too tight on me. And uh, if you look at the the Camaro SS video, I'm wearing a pair of like beat up old old sneakers. They were actually my kids. They were hand me ups when he he. Got, but his size was actually mine for a brief period of time. And that video had like 800,000 views and people couldn't stop talking about the beat up shoes. Like, oh, you got this Camaro SS, but look at your shoes. And they would all just crack up. Driving work boots don't matter. My Peterbilt isn't much of a drive machine either way. I've been thinking about, you know, like what, am, what kind of job am I going to do when I can't do what I you know, when I don't have the luck to do what I'm doing, and I've been thinking about driving. I don't know. I can't back up a lawn tractor with a 
with a with <laughs> with a trailer on it or a, a you know a, a fertilizer spreader. So I'm gonna need some help backing up to the to the loading dock. But I thought maybe long distance driving might not be bad. How do you stay awake? That's my big question, man. How do you stay awake? I don't couldn't get my nap every day, but who knows? Maybe we'll have autonomous trucks and and I'll be able to just like. <laughs> get the Peterbilt tune. Cool. Steel. I'm going to look at the map. Like, Alberta's way up there, man. Is it like... that's So that's all the... Uh, what do they call that? Tar sands stuff? Up there? <laughs> That's the attitude. You know, the the one thing that I miss about having a real job is that uh, you get paid. You know when you're going to get paid, whether it's, you know, you get a weekly paycheck or bi-weekly or bi-monthly or whatever it is. You know you're going to get paid, whether you're going to get a check or it's going to be automatically deposited in, in your account. But when you're a freelancer, the worst part about it is you like wait. Mostly pipeline stuff. Got it. You wait. You don't know. So it all comes down to account payable. Again, I'm under a social media gag order, so I can't talk about it. But the toughest part of freelancing, in addition to not having any health care, is just not having regularity. I ain't talking about that kind of regularity. Hey, where's my coffee? I'm just saying, you know, like. You know it's going to be there when you got other stuff to pay. Just a warning to anybody that wants to think about freelancing. Yeah, I'm no. I still have to deal with, um, you know, I still got people I work with. Some of them are cool, and some of them aren't. But yeah, I got. How does that go? I got ninety nine problems, but a boss ain't one of them. Kind of. I've been thinking about Uber too. Yeah, I need to have something that's, I need to have a fairly recent four-door with enough room in the back to make it comfortable. I wouldn't drive for Uber. I would drive for Lyft. I don't think I would drive for, for uh, I don't want to drive for Uber. Lyft, the Lyft drivers seem to be happier. I use them a lot. When I was self-employed for years. When it's good, it's good, but you can't just go and put in the hours and get paid like when you're just an employee. Yeah. Punching out, man. Punching out was like, boom. Like, yeah. That was a great. But now I'm never, I never punch out, man, because there's always something else that has to get, that has to get done. Always something else. What's going on, Manny boy? All right. We're winding down here. I never had like I didn't really have much dinner tonight, but it ain't happening now at nine thirty. <laughs> there is a couple of cold ones in there though. I hate to just like leave you while I go and get a beer. That wouldn't be right. Lyft also follows the DOT rules. Uber driver is gonna get caught up in a big DOT rate eventually. Convoy Freight app. It's like Uber, but for boxes can use a pickup truck. I haven't seen that. I'm writing that down. There's one called, um, of course, I need to get another truck. My son's got one, but I don't. What's it called? Roadie. Have you seen Roadie? <laughs> Roadie sounds like what you're talking about with Convoy Freight app. Where you can just like find find gigs carrying stuff. And I thought, man, if I could I go cross country that way, just picking up stuff. Like if you have a big van, like those big vans, the transit van, the sprinter, the uh Promaster. Those are awesome trucks. I the one that I that a transit that I drove um I took 
the kids stuff down to school and man, it just drove great. If there were gigs like that, you know, where you like you had if you weren't needing to have a CDL and you could just just drive a a big van, that would be pretty cool. Oh man, if you're drinking beer, go for it. No, I'm just gonna walk out and it'll be like an empty room. <laughs> Alright, man, hold on, I'll get the beer. If you hear any banging around, it's just me. Don't burn anything down. Okay, we're gonna like switch this to a beer channel. So tonight we're having a UFO. Hey, Whiteson. Hey, Whiteson. Mmm. I should have done that a lot sooner. Okay, that's still there. So, I don't know what I'm working on tomorrow. Hopefully I can get the Civic straightened out. I know, pretty much know what it is. I got a good idea what's wrong with it. And uh, it's not something that I really want to fix because it's, it needs to be done up on a lift. So, I might have somebody do it. And while it's getting done, I might just get the timing chain done, the timing belt done at the same time, the water pump. So I need to make some calls in the morning and say, hey, what's it going to cost to do this? When, it, when you have a car that's not really worth much, <laughs> you're hesitant to put much money into it. And, you know, I could see down the road in 10 years, that car might be kind of rare. Maybe if it's kept it fairly stock. If you look at cars that are 10 years older than it, so like Hondas from the 80s, they're starting to go up in value pretty well. So I forget who it was that so they wanted a, a one of those old 600s. If you look on 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 the ISJ10 site or go to go to Search Tempest. If you're searching for stuff on Craigslist, use Search Tempest because that'll search all the Craigslist across the entire country. Those little tiny Hondas are starting to go for, for bucks. Like the, the Accords, the early Accords, if it's clean, there aren't tons of them out there. But if it's clean, it can go for a decent amount of money. So, yeah, I want to kind of, you know, like do a, a restoration but not heavy-duty stuff. I don't – I rust repair is not one of my favorite things in the world. I got a rust spot I need to do on the – an explorer, you know, once it's in there, unless you replace it with metal, it's going to come back. I've been thinking about a lot of different stuff, like a Grand Wagoneers. The wife loves Grand Wagoneers. Thanks, Joe. But uh, the Grand Wagoneers rust like mad. I thought about maybe a Cherokee. I mean, I would like, I don't really want an SUV, but I would like something that could go off-road. So a smaller pickup would be cool. I kind of like the Tacomas, but I don't. They tend to have a lot of rust problems. The older Frontiers are interesting. Rangers, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Basically, if I keep doing what I'm doing and I'm getting cars... You know, it's like, it's for in-betweens. And it's for, what am I going to, like, drive to the train station or to the or to the airport? And I need something that's reliable and fairly safe for you to drive.
driving in like Newark Airport or, or, or Philly, you don't want to drive a complete piece of junk on one hand, but on the other side, you don't really want to leave something really nice out there either. Oh, man. All right. I'm winding down. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If you can think of anything that you've done to your car or truck from better fuel economy, throw it down in the in the uh, throw it down in the comments. And uh, I'm gonna like I don't know watch like go watch a couple episodes of Brooklyn Nine Nine. What's that called? What's that show called? I like it a lot. I don't watch many shows, but Brooklyn Nine Nine I like and. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. when that comes back. Other than that, I don't watch much on regular TV. Thanks for stopping in. I think next time we'll start drinking earlier on. This was an impromptu chat. And uh, it's cool, man. Good spending time. Catch you all down the road.